At most universities, students are essentially forced to purchase a large number of overpriced textbooks. The system has been set up to benefit the textbook companies, not the students. In an ideal world, a student that attends university should be provided with all the materials and tools they need in order to graduate. Textbooks are a scam. Dirty tactics. There are a number of techniques that textbook publishers use in order to encourage students to purchase their textbooks. 1. Revised editions. Textbook companies love releasing new editions of their textbooks. Often there is very little difference between editions. With the addition of a few new pictures, a new colourful cover, and a new layout or design, it's easy to convince students and staff that the new textbook is superior to previous editions. This semester, one of my students has been told that he must use the 16th edition of the textbook. The 15th edition, published in 2015, is out of date. 2. Reorganised chapters. A very simple tactic is to reorder the chapters. This doesn't sound like it would do very much, but imagine if every week your professor asks you to read, for example, page 317, second paragraph. If you're using anything but the latest edition of the textbook, this becomes very tiresome very quickly. Even if they ask you to read the second section of chapter 8, it would still require you to work out which chapter corresponds with chapter 8 of the new edition. It's an unwanted workload that most students would simply just avoid. 3. Resale Sabotage As a consequence of all the changes between textbook editions, it's very hard to resell your old textbooks. I know, I have a bunch of them at home that I simply cannot sell. The information in them is still valid. For example, calculus, as a concept, doesn't change very much over the years. However, my calculus textbook is no longer used in universities, so consequently is unsellable. I have no need for it anymore, as I can simply look online to find the answers to any of my calculus queries. 4. Lack of digital material. In general, textbooks are still printed on paper. Yes, I know, it's 2017, where every student has either a laptop or a tablet. But despite this, publishers refuse to hand out PDFs. I assume their fear is that if they give a PDF to one student, then that student will hand it out to all of their friends, consequently destroying demand for the textbook. 5. Teachers publishing their own textbooks. Yes, many professors are actually the authors of their own textbooks. Obviously, they have a vested interest in maintaining the status quo. You're blind, tough luck, pal. A couple of my students are blind. See my post, political correctness gone mad, for the politically correct term. Obviously, a person who can't see has no use for physical textbooks. However, this is not what the textbook publishers think. One of my students, let's call him Paul, was forced to buy all of his physical textbooks at a cost of about $400. The reason given was that the only way for the company to give him access to the ebooks was if he bought the physical textbooks to get their sealed access codes. He said he was willing to pay for the ebooks directly, but apparently that was not an option. Now what sort of company wants to force a blind person to buy a paper-based textbook? I'll tell you who, a greedy company. Luckily for Paul, the university came to its senses and decided to refund his money. It's lucky that he hadn't already unwrapped the books, as that would have made the refund impossible. The university spent the next few weeks negotiating with the publishers to see if they could get hold of some e-books. Only two of them came through with any sort of digital material. The others are apparently just ignoring the request. But it didn't end there. The material provided by one of the companies was an ebook that could only be accessed via their website using an access code. The thing is, Paul has to use a screen reader to read computer text for him, but the online content is not text based. It's displayed as an image that the screen reader cannot read. We thought we might be able to print the material to a text based PDF, but the company only allows 30 pages to be printed per account. So he managed to download one chapter, but clearly that's not adequate. It turned out that the printed PDF also could not be read by the screen reader. We tried converting it using an OCR, an Optical Character Recognition Program, but the textbook company had done some manipulation to the text so, so that it could not be read. Bottom line is that textbook companies don't want people to be able to copy their textbooks in a digital format. They're dead scared that any digital material will immediately be published on the likes of the Pirate Bay. Paul and I had to resort to scanning each page of the textbook manually and convert the image to text using OCR. The result isn't great as there are many pictures in textbooks that have strangely formatted text, headings in funny positions, as well as tables and the like that use a plethora of different styles. OCR can only do so much. Open textbooks. 
So what can we do about the textbook problem? There are a couple of options, both of which involve the textbook companies giving up some, or all, of their revenue. 1. Open textbooks. The premise is simple. In the same vein as Wikipedia, teachers around the world could contribute to a global calculus book, or anthropology book, etc. This would send textbook prices plummeting and allow the latest information to be added to textbooks as required. Some would argue that quality would be sacrificed. For example, online vandals might publish questionable facts. But I think ultimately we would be able to iron out any kinks and create a truly marvellous library of open textbooks. 2. Publishers model. With pressure from universities as well as the government, publishers could be compelled to change their model so that it favours students. Generation Y no longer need printed material. They are just as happy using a computer or tablet as they are reading a book. Producing a 700-page hardcover textbook is expensive and a waste of resources. Creating digital material is cheap. The choice is obvious. We just need someone to have the courage to stand up against the textbook companies. 3. Protest. Students and like-minded staff need to protest the ridiculous expense involved in the textbook industry. Change will only come about if people get angry. If textbook publishers see that their model is failing and customers are leaving, they'll change. I guarantee it. Education should be free. It benefits society as a whole. To not only charge students for their education, but then to expect them to purchase expensive hardcover textbooks, it's bordering on criminal. We need to stop these thieves whose goal isn't to help society, but to line their own pockets. I'll finish with a quote from American entrepreneur Eli Broad. How absurd that our students tuck their cell phones, blackberries, iPads and iPods into their backpacks when they enter a classroom and pull out a tattered textbook.